communities and disaster relief organizations must look beyond the immediate state of emergency and short-term relief, short relief efforts to focus also on permanent and long-term redevelopment that address the organic needs of each community. This includes rebuilding with future disasters in mind and incorporating mitigation and risk reduction into any reconstruction efforts. According to the World Bank, a dollar spent on preparedness saves $7 on response. Second, communications between relief organizations is imperative, particularly in urban settings, and systems need to be further developed and refined to ensure coordination among the various groups providing aid. Third, we must establish clear processes to deal with the lack of documentation and unclear land tenure in developing countries to remove barriers to assistance that lower income residents desperately need. Planning for community enumeration will drastically streamline the road to recovery in ravaged developing areas. And finally, policymakers <coughs> will focus on enabling families to return to those homes that are structurally sound, on developing programs to help families fix homes that can be repaired, and I'm planning for the reintegration of many families whose homes have been destroyed, but who inevitably will want to return to be near family, community, and work. So we focus on all the people in need of shelter during our observance of World Habitat Day. We implore businesses, government, policy, civic and relief organization leaders to cooperatively institute practices that support adequate housing in all parts of the world. Throughout the month of October, Habitat for Humanity will host local events across the U.S. and in 40 countries to rally support for adequate housing. As part of our World Habitat Day observance, we're releasing our fourth annual shelter report, which elaborates on many of the points I've made here today. Our hope and vision is to see policies established that ultimately ease the recovery burden on severely devastated areas worldwide. I hope never again to witness the kind of scenes I've seen during the past six years, walking on the rubble and seeing desolation between the Indian Ocean tsunami, the Gulf Coast, the Sichuan earthquake in China, and Haiti have been some of the most difficult moments of, of my time at Habitat. However, when we talk to the individual families who are rebuilding their lives, it, it brings hope. I spoke uh, last year to a young mother who was telling me what a difference it made to be out of living in a traffic circle and into a transitional shelter to be able to give birth to her newborn. And it's just heartbreaking to see how many people are still living in horrific conditions. Uh, but the difference decent shelter can make to a family's chance to rebuild. Scientists tell us we can expect an increasing number of disasters in the coming years. So we have to find ways to help and to engage generous people all around the world who are eager to respond to the tragedies that befall their global neighbors.